James Monroe is a <clears throat> very interesting character because he started off his career as a noted Virginia anti-federalist allied with Patrick Henry. Uh, Murray Rothbard discusses him uh, in his fifth volume of Conceived in Liberty during the Virginia ratification debates and some of the politics surrounding that. So he started off as a Virginia anti-federalist. But as time went on by the Jefferson administration, he becomes more and more nationalist. He becomes more and more influenced by Madison. Uh, and then he becomes uh, Madison's secretary of state. And by this point in time, he's, he's sort of a, an establishment Republican, so to speak. So he's a classic moderate Republican during the Madison administration. And then later on becomes really one of the preeminent nationalist Republicans. The, so these are the big government Republicans. They're very similar to the Federalists in policy, but they're just they, they wanted to be in control of things instead of the the Federalists. So Madison, excuse me, Monroe is in charge of the country now. This is the so-called era of good feelings. It's really more accurately described as an era of corruption, okay? Because the National Republicans are in total control and they're using this time to sort of continue to fasten um, various crony special privileges onto the American economy. So Monroe is kind of in charge of this. He's not necessarily a major player, uh, but he is a president sympathetic to central banking, tariffs, internal improvements, foreign interventions, uh, and so on. So he, in, like many cases, unfortunately, he starts off as someone who is uh, ready to reform the system. He's fighting the Constitution. He supports states' rights and small government. But given him, given enough time in the swamp, so to speak, uh, he he soon becomes uh, just a, a, a just a, a, a standard Madison disciple, so to speak. Mm -hmm.